Hey everybody, it's Moonbow here, and welcome back to some more Endless Scrap Mechanic. It's time for Top of the Shop, the series where we take a look at the best builds from the past week on the Steam Workshop. This is a great time to see some really cool creations and get inspired, so let's just get right into it. So we're going to start off with this Rolls Royce Dawn created by none other than David Baguetta. Now from what I understand this is a car that has tons of different features. Now just from looking at the exterior alone it looks absolutely amazing. The shaping is so well done and I absolutely love this front hood here. Now let's take a look at this door here. We're going to press this button and ooh, look at that. We've got a wonderful door opening up from a rear hinge. Let's hop into the driver seat here. So that was something that was really cool that I barely noticed when you get into the car. Look at that. The car just dropped down. When I get into the driver's seat, you can see it rises up off of the ground and it gives you a little more clearance. That's such an awesome feature. So first things first, let's just try and drive around this car for a moment here and see what it's all about. Oh yeah, the handling is really good. The turning radius is really nice as well. And this is a bit of a bigger car, but the scaling still feels really well to all of the different scrap mechanic pieces. So let's try out all of these different functions here. We got two. Ooh, okay, so two is just gonna drop us right back down and we can lift ourselves back up again by pressing that same button. And then we press three and oh, three hides the hood ornament. Look at this, we got our duck hood ornament on the front of the car and when I press it, oh, it sneaks away. Now, apparently if you try and steal the hood ornament on a Rolls Royce, it actually hides in the vehicle and you can do it with this one as well. So if we try and do some damage to it, Look at that! It just completely protects itself within the vehicle, and so that is just such a cool thing. Now, I think when we hop into the vehicle, it should pop it back up again. Yeah, look at that. So then we got four, which opens... Ooh, look at this. This is a convertible. Oh my god. So look at all that space in the back there reserved just for this hood. And wow, what a mechanism. Wow, it's sliding right in. It fits perfectly. And then it shots, wow, that is probably like the best I have ever seen as a convertible. And then of course we've got it closing again, it does the reverse operation, goes right back into place, and that just kind of sets itself right back in, wow, it's so smooth. So let's see what 5 does, this is going to turn on the lights, okay, and then we got 6, which is the radio, okay, and then we have 7, ooh, okay, this is the rotating console. Look at this, so when you press 7, it rotates the console in and out. Now I'm assuming that must be like a feature in an actual Rolls Royce, and so that's just an awesome attention to detail. And then 8 is the horn. Next up we're going to be checking out a Mack truck and tanker trailer created by Itka Mechanic. So we're going to spawn in the, uh, the truck itself here. Now I already spawned in the tank in the back here. Now this is such a cool all vanilla build. You can see the usage of those like giant coil cylinders on the tops of warehouses here creating that different effect. Now I don't know if this is hollow or not. I'm kind of curious here. What is oh okay no that's right it makes sense it's not hollow because it is these pieces. Sometimes you just forget how scrap mechanic works. Uh, now let's see here we're gonna grab this truck and now I'm assuming we should be able to just back right up. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I mean, maybe it's not perfect, but hopefully it's good enough here. So I guess we're just gonna go to this switch, drop it down. Ooh, okay, is it in? All right, here we go. We're gonna try and haul this trailer. I hope I did everything right. Okay, I feel like I did not do everything right. So I was just out here trying to find something to maybe give more power to this truck, and I noticed the front hood here. There was a bunch of bearings, and look at this really awesome, like, curved effect right here that they created. It looks so good. So I went into the engine and just gave it a little more power. Now let's see if that is going to help us out here. Okay. We're kind of gaining a little bit of speed. All right, I've come to the conclusion that this is just a ridiculously heavy trailer that is maybe a little overrated for this truck, but this thing looks absolutely amazing. The design is pretty much perfect. Next up, we're going to be checking out the Vanilla Explosive Cannon Volley created by Z-Man2255. So this looks like... A rather dangerous creation, um, I guess, oh my, that's a lot of spud guns. I wasn't sure what to expect here, but let's just hop into the seat, 
So this must be like just a different set of explosives on each button. I, I don't know, but I have a guess here. So let's just try number one. Ooh, yeah, okay, so that just shot one. Okay, I'm just still pressing one. Oh, and then it launches a bunch of them. Okay, so it seems to have like a bit of a sequence here. So let's try that again. We're gonna press two. Okay, so it shoots one. And then it shoots another one. And then it shoots two at a time. That is so cool. So if I just kind of press this relatively fast, yeah, we can like rapid fire these things. All right, I'm gonna try and press every single button on my keyboard here from one to eight as fast as I can. I don't think it'll get all the inputs at once, but we're gonna try anyway. Here we go in three, two, one. Come on, shoot them. Oh yeah, that was fast. Okay, one last set of explosions. This time I have a target. It is my latest combat mech there. So we're gonna get ready here now. Okay, so obviously some of them aren't going to hit it, but that's okay. Maybe we'll just focus on the center ones. Let's try four. Ooh, that one was close. Another one. Ooh, under his arm. Okay, we gotta get a little more right. There we go. Okay, now they're starting to go through it a bit. Oh, wait, I just blew myself up. Well, I gotta say, that is a very effective way to blow things up. So if you need something in a pinch, then you should check it out. Next up, we're gonna be taking a look at another creation by David Baguetta. This is the smallest WASD converter. So this is more of an example and also something that you could grab and save for yourself as a module that you put into your builds for a WASD converter. So we're gonna hop into the seat here and you're gonna see, I'm gonna press WAS and D and we're gonna get four different outputs here by the looks of it with those lights in front of us. So if I press W, oh, look at that. We get the green light. That's so cool. And look at this. We've got like a spinning mechanism here that is reading that input. And then if I press S, we get the red light there in front of us. So that's the reverse. And then if we press A and D, we get the light outputs there as well for left and right. So this is a build that uses some glitch welding to get all of those components into a very, very small space. And to the right here, this is probably what that entire thing is completely unpackaged so you can see all of the different sequences that happen to get those outputs. So we're gonna try that out right now here if we press A. All right, there we go. So we got like a logic gate going to the left one and then a logic gate there going to the right one for D. And now when I press W, take a look at that. You can see there is like a full pulse being sent through the entire thing that only gets read when that thing is spinning. And now when I press S, you can see it does the same thing, obviously through a different circuit that sends the output to the red light. Now, I think the one thing to note about this is that it does take a little bit of work to connect this to outputs. As you can see, everything is going to a huge mess of circles there. So you have to do a little bit of extra work to get this thing in your creation, but I can see that it would be worth it if you really need it. And here we have a DeLorean from Back to the Future created by Tamatsu. Now Tamatsu is another great builder here in Scrap Mechanic and I'm really excited to check this out because I think I started a DeLorean a long time ago and I never really finished it but this looks like an absolutely amazing creation and I'm pretty sure this is all vanilla as well. So why don't we just hop inside of this thing, see if we can't bring it up to 88 miles per hour here. Let's start pressing. Okay, maybe I should just press W here and see what happens. Okay, well, we got thrusters coming out of the back. This thing is super fast. Like, it's unbelievably fast and extremely stable. There must be some crazy stuff going on in here, but this thing is incredibly stable, especially for how fast it's going. But I mean, I guess this thing should be capable of flight here. Let's try this out. Okay, whoa, we're in the air. Oh my God, look at this. The wheels, they turned in and everything. This is so cool. So we can fly pretty much anywhere we want in this thing. Now, I don't know if we can actually travel through time or anything. I don't know if that's quite possible at the moment here, but why don't we just touch down really fast and see uh, what these switches do. All right, here we go. We're just gonna bring it right into this platform. Nice and easy, just like that. Wow, oh, this thing is so nice. All right, so we're gonna stop right here. Let's turn this thing off. Oh, and look at that, it turns right back into a car. 
automatically. Okay, so it turns out that seven and eight are the switches for the doors. And look at that, we can get the doors open. Looks really cool. So this is an absolutely amazing recreation of the time machine from Back to the Future, the DeLorean DMC. It looks absolutely awesome and functions perfectly. And next up on the lift, we've got a Bateau de Pêcheur, which is a fishing boat created by Sweaty. So let's spawn this in here and I guess I should probably be near some water. So I've got the perfect creation to get on over to that water. We just checked out a DeLorean time machine and wouldn't you know it, there is a hoverboard as well. This is created by Fien Beta. So uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, Back to the Future, there were hoverboards in it. I think they were probably like some, some brighter greens and pinks and not black uh, because they were kind of like retro 80s future. But this is... A hoverboard and where do I get on this thing? Okay, I think this is just a seat right there. Okay, yeah, look at that. Okay, we're standing on the hoverboard. We can, oh, we can wiggle our arms. Nice, okay, and I guess we're just gonna press one. Okay, apparently there's some invisible buttons here. Two and three, there are buttons. You just don't see them in the toolbar. Now, I think we might just need to get off of the platform here. Okay, wait, yeah, we're kinda, we're doing it now. We're hovering. Okay, I am definitely a novice. I seem to have planted myself into the ground. Oh my, I am a terrible hoverboard pilot. Okay, I thought I was going in the other direction. Okay, we're just gonna get to the water. I'm just gonna hold down W until we get to the water. Woo, all right. We made it to the water. Will it hover over water? Oh man, look at that. It hovers over water. Oh, okay, so this. This is what it should be doing. Oh my God, okay, this is amazing now. Ooh, man, okay, it feels like I'm actually catching some waves now. We're actually touching the water. Okay, so this is, this is pretty cool. But yeah, the disclaimer of being in a flat land probably makes sense. Oh no, come back, come back, come back. So we're finally at the water though. So we are going to spawn in this fishing boat right here, nice and close to the shore. And oh yeah, look at this thing. So let's climb aboard this fishing boat here and see what we got. Oh man, there's all sorts of stuff on the deck. Look, these buckets have water in them. I hope this boat is not slowly sinking. Oh, look at that. We even have a little trapped glow bug here. So this must be like the fishing line in the back here. We do have a switch, let's press it. Oh, what is in here? Okay, so this is like just like a general maintenance and motor compartment there by the looks of it. And so there's nothing on here. Okay, so that's not gonna spin or anything, but why don't we take this boat for a spin? So I don't know any of these controls, so we're just gonna try them out here. We're gonna press one. Okay, one is the radio. Two is, what? is that so i don't know what that is maybe it's like pretending to be like a pump or something uh let's press three four is the lights five is backing up okay perfect here we go oh we got the spinning lights on the top so this is like a pretty chill ride by the looks of it here you know we're not going too fast or anything but i think i could press eight at the same time as w to kind of like give us a speed boost oh yeah look at that so now if we were like heading out to the ocean for a day of fishing we could get there much faster so this is definitely a great little boat, you know, it functions really well, it floats at a great level, it handles well, it also has the functionality of like bow thrusting as well as strafing and you have all the controls that you need. So this thing is a good boat. So next up we're going to be checking out a very strange thing. This is a double bearing demonstration stand created by Donaiti Kramixi. So. I spawned this in before I started recording because I just, I didn't know what it was going to be. I didn't know if I really wanted to take a look at it or not. And I was very surprised with how cool this thing is. So this is basically two bearings connected together. Now, right now it kind of just looks like one bearing in between two pipes. But if I get out the connection tool, you'll notice that it is just a little bit wider than a single bearing. And if I go over it with the mouse, you can see that there are indeed two separate bearings side by side. So on the table, it's demonstrating a gas engine, an electric motor. We also have a controller here as well as a seat connected with steering. Now, it took me a bit to kind of really figure out what is going on here. So with the motors though, this acts as like a natural resistance clutch. And the best way I think I can demonstrate this is by taking the hammer out and just hitting this once. So take a look at this. You can see that it spins with power, 
but it slows itself down based off of the engine speed. So what's happening, I'm pretty sure, is that these bearings are working against each other. So right now the engine is in fact on, I have the switch turned on. Those bearings in theory are spinning, but they're spinning against each other, which gives us the ability to kind of have a free spinning bearing that does have a slowing effect. So we can turn that off and move over here to the electric motor. Now this is very similar as well, but you'll see that it has a very different style of movement. When I hit it with the hammer, it doesn't come out with a huge acceleration. You'll see that it actually decelerates at a consistent speed and eventually it just stops. And then the third station here is a controller. Now this is probably the most interesting thing because you don't really use it to spin these bearings. What this does is it creates an angle limiter. And so the best way I can show you is by turning this on, you can see it doesn't move, it doesn't do anything. It just has some preset angles involved here. And when I hit it with the hammer, look at that. It just stops completely right there. Now, if I hit it back in the other direction, you can see it now stops at a new angle. And so what this is doing is it's allowing for free spinning movement on the bearing while restricting how far it will spin. So I feel like if I were to maybe change this to like 45 and 60 degrees or something, let's say, and now I hit it with the hammer, there you go, look at that. You can see we now have a new set of angles in which it's limiting. Now this is the setup that I'm not sure about. I don't know exactly what to see or expect with something like this. So this is that double bearing setup connected to a seat and it's steering. So. It says that it's supposed to act as an angle limiter as well, but I'm, I did some testing and I mean, at the moment right now, you can see it doesn't turn at all. And that is because these turning bearings are turning against each other. So it's interesting enough that you could do this, but I'm not sure how you would apply it. Now I can show you by reversing one of these bearings, you'll see that they do in fact turn. So if you know of any application that this could be used for, then let me know down in the comments as well. And even if you have ideas for what you might use for any of these other setups as well, I find them to be so interesting. I've never seen two bearings connected together like this before, and it is a very interesting concept. And now it's time for some more firepower. This is an anti-aircraft turret created by G. D. So this, I believe, is all vanilla as well, and I'm not even going to weld it to the ground. I am confident that this thing is going to work right out of the box like this. So, okay, we got all sorts of stuff set up. We got a single seat here. We might as well just hop in and try some stuff out. Okay, there we go. We are doing some left and right turning, and oh yeah, we can aim it up and down as well. Of course, I mean, this is an anti-aircraft gun, so it would make sense. Now it looks like there is a plunger right here that we can use maybe to aim down like a sight maybe. So we're gonna try that out. We're gonna go into strict follow cam. We're gonna point right at the plunger. Okay, there we go. And let's turn on the firing power and take a look at that. Oh man, that is like some really nice smooth movement. Now if I move my mouse up just a little bit though, you can see we can really get that plunger on the exact spot that those spuds are going, man. This is really cool. And so this is in creative mode, but it still has the uh, the containers and everything. So this seems like something that you could definitely adapt to like a defense system in survival mode. And the last creation that we are gonna be taking a look at today is the mech version three flight model created by Senku Ishigami. So this looks like an absolutely amazing mech. Let's bring it into the world here. Oh, wow. Just look at that starting pose. Wow, that is so good. So the thing that really stands out to me with this mech is just all of these articulated limbs. I can really feel the mechanical components and how they would like all interact with each other as a robot. It is so well done and the shape of it is just absolutely perfect. Now, okay, we got a seat right back here. Let's hop in to this seat. Okay, I think we might have to press one. Oh, look at that. It is putting us right into the pilot seat. Oh, that is so cool. I want to see that in first person. Okay, here we go. We are going into the mech. 
Oh, that is just perfect. So we're just gonna try and walk around and look at this. Oh, that is so cool. Now this is a relatively simple walking mechanism, having like two bearings spinning like against each other in 360 loops. Now it's a great way to create a walking mechanism. And I think the coolest part of this all, I believe is just all of that suspension. Look at when I press down, you can see those suspensions compressing in the legs. And it just gives it such a like really raw feeling of walking. And just look at that. We can see even the hands are turning. And oh man, look at that. The torso on the top, it turns as well. So if I stop walking, we'll be able to see if I turn left and right. Oh man, that is so cool. Now let's try out some of these buttons and switches. There are a whole bunch of them. Okay, so two. Oh, look at that. So two is going to aim the gun down. Oh, so four activates the gun itself. And look at that. It even it incorporates the logic sequence into the firing. So you can see there's lights on the top, the logic going as well. And that just kind of like helps animate the whole thing. Man, that is so cool. Now we got five. What is that? Oh, wow. This looks like some type of blade or sword that you can pop out. Oh, that is so cool. So now we got some switches here. Let's see what six does. Okay, six is some thrusters on the top. Seven is, ooh, some down or some pointed up thrusters. We got eight, which is, ooh, some front shoulder thrusters. And then we also have nine, which is more. So I guess this is all for flight. Now, I, I have no idea how I am to pilot this thing. So maybe if I press like seven and eight together... Okay, it's kind of working. The suspension glitch turning works as well. If I turn six on, it's going to start leaning us forward. Maybe I need to press nine. Maybe it's just all four of them. Okay, maybe it's not all four of them. Okay, I am not trained in piloting these mechs at all. So I gotta say, this is one of the most inspiring mech builds I've ever seen. It is so minimalistic and it functions so well and it offers so much. I'm definitely gonna be thinking about this one. So that is going to be the video for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, if you enjoyed the video, then be sure to leave a like. And if you wanna tune in for some more Endless Scrap Mechanic, then be sure to subscribe to the channel as well. And maybe even turn on some notifications so you get the latest and the craziest coming from me in Scrap Mechanic. So thank you so much for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one. So bye for now.